What if I told you that everything that you know about creativity is a lie and it is way, way simpler than you think? So in this video, I will share my approach to creativity and how I went from a struggling music producer who is unable to finish tracks, who is unable to mix, like an overall just like fe feeling depressed about my music that I'm not good enough to, someone who is making music full time, uh, successfully producing music that I'm proud of and uh, helping a lot of guys uh, working with one-on-one -on -one clients and so on. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Vlad and I create superstar music producers. If you're interested in taking your music production skills to the next level, whether it's production, mixing, sound design, composition, whatever is the thing, maybe you want to start releasing music, consistently consistently uh, get signed to a label. Uh, there's a link down below. Feel free to book a call with me or send me a message on Instagram. And also, if you want to take your signature sound to the next level, I have a more holistic approach and really understand what makes you unique as an artist. I really, really recommend reading my book. will be some, somewhere here. Uh, and it will help you to understand what makes you, you unique on a deeper level. So let's get started with tutorial. So this probably is going to be a revelation for some of you guys, and I'm sure some of you already know, um, but creativity is a systematic process. Yes, it is a system. Yes, you can force it and you can have it on demand. It shouldn't be like a woo woo, this like mystic thing that just comes to you and then it goes away and then you feel uninspired. Like I think it's BS and I have like very, very like systematic approach to this. So let me tell you more about this. In 2018, I was depressed, struggling with finishing track, and I was seriously considering qu quitting music until I discovered this. So basically, I signed up for a coaching program. It was a uh, group coaching with the elements of one-on-one -on -one coaching where we mixed our track from scratch, and that really changed everything. So I understood once you have systems in place, once you have a very predictable process that you could basically replicate and you can use it every time and get the same result, everything became so, so easy, right? Let me tell you more about this. Systems are everything in music and in life in general. So if you think of a system, it's basically when we are turning something unorganized to something organized and balanced. So like on the left, you can see something like unorganized, it's just a mess, right? And on the right, it's sort of a representation how a system should look like. So again, if you think of a diet, if your body is not getting enough nutrients, you will feel bad, you will not be able to grow muscles, you, you will feel tired and so on. Same in music. If you don't have systems in place, you will struggle with mixing, you will struggle with arrangement, composition, whatever is the thing. So. Let's talk about what is a system. Let's <laughs> look at this beautiful animation. I just I just uh, played with my presentation a little bit more. So to me, system is a scalable and predictable process. So for me, in music, I want to have a predictable process when it comes, let's say, to um, production, when it comes to composition, when it comes to mixing, and so on, and so on, and so on, right? That's a, that is a system. To illustrate what I mean here, let's jump back into Ableton and I'm gonna show you something. So when it comes to creating systems, uh, in Ableton, like why I love Ableton so much and why it's, it's my door, uh, it's because you can group everything into racks. So if you take a look, I have like a whole folder of samples, uh, it's atmospheres, bases, so I can literally just drag and drop sample like not not the sample but uh the preset like with the rack like this i can put fx i can put everything like into the rack so this is the the base right and then like the beauty of this is you can have like groups you can have like uh with processing i mean right so i can show you the drums for example so you can literally like save the whole drum arrangement, the whole bass arrangement and just drag and drop it into the next project and it becomes so, so easy to make a track. Just listen to this. I already have my finished arrangement. All the drums are ready, everything is ready. So like it makes it so, so easy to use it. So again, my tip for you here, organize everything, organize your presets, organize your uh, processing chains and so on. So have those 
just at the top of your fingers, right? And then again, like this is the sound that I use a lot. Uh, let me solo. So I can just have it like this. And you can see those are all my signature sounds. So it doesn't matter what kind of project I'm working on. I can simply drag and drop the preset just like this. So that's, in my opinion, is a system, right? How to use systems in music. So again, let's take a look at, at this beautiful animation. So basically a system is your library of sounds, presets and techniques. And this was exactly what I just showed you in Ableton. So you want to have everything organized, you know, at the top of your fingers, right? That's ideally how it should look like. So if you look at this, I system like in, in this case, so what I did, I started with, with something blue, then I added green, then another uh, sort of color of blue, is it? <laughs> uh, and then I took something from my original library to add on top of that idea to make the full track. This is how you should ideally use systems. So this is an example of how to not use systems. And uh, it's a random mix of everything. So what I'm talking about here is if you start a track like completely from scratch, you, you design presets from scratch, like it takes away so much of that precious creative energy. So if you can simplify, if you can streamline, if you can shorten the process, that is when the music production process becomes like so, so easy. I just want to show you two tracks. Uh, one is going to be this one. So just take a listen at the overall vibe, at the sound, at, at just how you feel about this project, right? So let's check, for example, let's check this job. So what I did here, I basically just copied the elements. I took the same drums. So I basically saved the whole group. You can just drag and drop it into your user library like, like this. And then you will have uh, the drum group, uh, the bass, any, like anything from the project you can save in Ableton, including MIDI and so on, right? So I'm gonna delete the drums. So I took the same drums, I took the same bass line, and then I made a new idea based on that. And then I use the same instruments to get sort of like a similar vibe, but it's a little bit different. But at the same time, it's sort of like I'm copying myself, but it's not bad. It's not bad. This is how you actually achieve consistency in your sound. telling that it is like anywhere near good sound but this is more just to illustrate to you the concept so you are basically taking a little building blocks from your sample library and then you are putting that inside the project and that's basically how you get this like endless creativity this is how i work i just copy everything that works i tweak that a little bit and then i change it and then here you have a new track right and then the last example before we end and before we talk about the key takeaways is uh, this uh, silly, like cheesy uh, Tate House uh, little demo that I made, which sounds like this. I used some of the sounds from my signature library and then some of the new sounds, right? I'm not telling you that you should copy yourself, but if you incorporate like a little bit from your signature sounds, then look, it's gonna be so, so easy, right? So what I did here is I took some of, like, some of the sounds from my signature library, which is this one. And I also used it here. You can, you can hear. I've layered it with this one. But in a different context, the same sound can sound completely different and it can give you completely, it can give you a completely different vibe, right? 
So yeah, and then I just used some of the sounds on top. I use this sound like a lot, almost in every single track. It's this like side trancey kind of sound atmosphere, however you call it, right? Then I did this thing. I use it in, again, like in a couple of my tracks. I really like those like FM-ish kind of plucky sounds, like one of my favorite uh, things in music. And then that's, that's basically it. So it took me like a little bit of time, I don't like half an hour, uh, and then I spent like an hour polishing it for the video, but really I got the basic idea within like 15, 20 minutes, right? That, that, that was the thing. So this is the thing that I want you to understand. Once you have the system, creativity is not a problem. You will be creative on demand. I am creative on demand. Like I don't have to think just because I got really good at making music. I have all the tools and I simplified and streamlined the music production process so well that I'm like, hey, like throw this, throw this, throw this. And then I have uh, a basic demo, then expand the arrangement and then like you have it. And then like we do the mix and, and, and we finalize it, okay? So let's talk about the key uh, takeaways. So what I want you to understand from this video. So you want to create environments that will stimulate your creativity. So for me, it was organizing my library, saving all those racks, because once I have them ready, I just throw them into the project and that's it. Uh, understand what is holding you back the most. So whether it's like sound design, mixing and so on, if that's sound design, if you're just like setting and making those presets from scratch, just like stop doing that for a while. Focus more on the composition, on the arrangement, get some really good presets, tweak them a little bit and that's it, right? So you have to understand what is holding you back and then just eliminate that. Create your library of signature sounds, technique, presets, and strategies. Again, that, that is really all about creating the library. So once you do it, like it becomes again, like so, so easy to make music and you just saw how easy it was. And don't be hesitant to copy yourself. I do believe like it, it, it's normal. I just copy myself like every single time, right? Why can't I use the same baseline if it sounds good? Why can't I use the same structure, the same drums, maybe tweak them a little bit, or maybe like, heck, like I want to use the same drums. Like music should be egocentric. So if you like the track, then it's awesome. But then if somebody, somebody told you that, hey, like I don't like how you sound or like you sound too close, to, like it's too similar to the previous track, like who cares? Like who gives a damn? Like you should be happy with, with, the, with the music that you make. So yeah. I hope that the video was useful. So let me know what you think of the new format, because uh, I'm trying to experiment with the length, I'm trying to you know understand what is working best for my audience. Maybe like it's just taking one simple concept and then explaining that in like 10, 12, 15 minutes. Maybe it's a long one, I don't know yet. So I'm just experimenting. Please let me know in the comments below what you think of this format. And I'll see you guys in the next one.